Hi, this is Matt Welsh with Spiritual Media Blog, and today I'm here with Dr. Lisa, an intuitive, holistic physician and medical doctor. Dr. Lisa, thanks so much for being here with us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you today. So, you know, tell us a little bit about your background for our viewers who might not be familiar with you. I I know you spent 15 years, you developed, for 15 years, you developed a successful private rheumatology practice in Phoenix and Scottsdale, and then you started providing intuitive holistic counseling since 2000. Um, can you speak a little bit about those experiences? Well, I was conventionally trained at uh, USC, LA County Medical Center, in um, the field of rheumatology um, in the late 80s. And I had a great practice offer when I completed my fellowship training in Arizona, and I had a wonderful practice. Um, and it was originally in uh, Phoenix, and then I moved into Scottsdale. Um, and what happened is I ended up developing a group of patients that had fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome. Uh, rheumatology typically takes care of people with lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and a variety of different connective tissue diseases, but there was also a large group that have the, the conditions I just mentioned. And I started leaning towards that group and uh, had a large number of patients. I became an expert witness for fibromyalgia patients uh, that had, had developed fibromyalgia as a result of uh, car accidents. And um, so I had to say that they developed this condition as a result of the accident and therefore received damages and so forth. But um, when I became interested in alternative medicine when these patients were not responding to any treatment particularly. And I started learning about herbs, uh, homeopathy. I became board certified in that. Um, I learned, I s underwent acupuncture treatments just because that was good for pain relief. And I didn't get trained in it, but I wanted to experience a variety of different alternative therapies because you don't receive this training in medical school. And um, as, as time went on, these patients, these patients uh, uh, ended, up, ended up having, having uh, requirement uh, requirements, requirements and uh, wanting disability statements filled out. They, did, they had no desire to get well and uh, just wanted to treat the symptoms. Even though initially I had some good results with the treatments, uh, the alternative therapies, I started, I ended up with the more severe cases, I suppose. But that was, became very depressing to me, and uh, I felt like I wasn't really doing any good. Um, so I then uh, began really going deeper into learning other modalities, and eventually. Um, I did a technique called emotional freedom technique, which is where you tap on various parts sure. of the body and it releases emotions. And I, I decided to experiment with my daughter first, <laughs> of course, experiment on your child. Sure. <laughs> and I, I ended up, uh, she, she was, had some anxiety issues and they actually cleared up. So I said, okay, I'll try this for my anger. Cause I, I, I mean, I'm not violent, but I wanted to help you know, just get my temper under a little better control, especially when I was driving. So sure. uh, uh, on the 10th um, of tenth um, treatment of the emotional freedom technique, I ended up having, <coughs> excuse me, a, uh, what I would call like an out-of-body experience. Mm -hmm. And my intuition kind of came blasting out like a psychedelic experience, that's all I can say. Um, I was uh, literally looking at my body, and I was very like, "What? What's going on?" Because I was very left brain and logical, sequential thinker, and you know, realized you know when you see a patient, you know, you need to do your history, your physical, your lab, your X-ray, and then get the results. But I used to know what was wrong with the patient before they even came into the room. Whoa. But I would go, "Oh, you know, that's just a coincidence," even though it happened a lot, and I would just ignore it. But this time, I decided, you know what? I better pay attention to intuition, uh, which is really, you know, listening to that inner wisdom or your high self that's um, within you, uh, that quiet voice, you know, deep, deep, deep. So um, I said, okay, what do I do with this? Because I was not really religious, 
you know, I was, I was agnostic almost, um, mm. and I just didn't know what to do. So um, I decided, well, I'll just go. I had a rabbi at the time because I was raised Jewish. My husband's Lutheran, but my daughter was um, undergoing religious training at the time. So I said, oh, I'll just pop over there and explain to him this crazy experience because I didn't know what, what to do. And he said, you should go on Larry King Live. This is really fantastic. And I'm like, going, thanks. You know, that was a great help. <laughs> sure. <Yeah. laughs> so, so I ended up studying uh, the Kabbalah, which is um, basically Jewish mysticism. Um, that's the Gnostic tradition in Christianity. And, you know, there's a whole variety of mystic mysticism uh, areas of different religions. But... Um, I started doing that. I read about near-death experiences. I read about, you know, all the different psychic phenomena, phenomenon because I was, you know, this is a whole field that I had no clue about. And basically it's really activating your right brain, which is logical. I mean, which is, uh, you know, your creative side and your intuitive side versus your left brain, which is sequential. So I was then logical. So basically with, this type of thing, you are throwing out logic, basically, and just trusting wisdom, you know? And so I um, ended up um, really just going on this, I would call it a journey, you know, where I studied all these things and just came to the realization that I really couldn't spend one more day in conventional medicine wow. um, because it wasn't providing me the uh, answers or the satisfaction, you know, of because I was treating symptoms, not getting to the root of the problem, and the patients really, they were feeling better, but they weren't cured or they weren't like markedly better, you know, they were okay, and that was just not satisfactory enough for me. So I um, left my conventional practice after I developed this technique, which I'll explain in a little while, but that. This technique that I developed, which I fine-tuned over the years, um, helped me move forward in developing what I call intuitive, holistic counseling and healing. Uh, and holistic meaning body, mind, soul. So I work on the whole person, you know. And um, I use my intuition. And then I use, I counsel the person, but I also provide healing as well. And almost like an energy type healing. So I moved and I opened up a holistic clinic and then closed it because I was way ahead of my time. This was in 2000. And um, eventually I moved into the ARE clinic, which is um, stands for Association Research and Enlightenment, which there is a branch of this in uh, Virginia Beach, which is based on the teachings of Edgar Cayce, who was the greatest psychic that ever lived. So I spent a number of years there. Um, he had developed remedies. He died in the 1940s, and these remedies were available in the clinic, plus a lot of his teachings. There were study groups and so forth, and I saw a large number of patients there and also talked with people all over the world and the United States because my work is effective just as well on phone, Skype, FaceTime as it is on, um, uh, you know, in person. So uh, I, ba I basically continue to do this type of work for the for the next, uh, from 2000 on, since that time. And um, I've been in and out of various holistic clinics and um, worked pretty much eventually uh, in my home, working with people all over the United States and the U.S., and then using office space when I needed it for local people in Arizona. Yeah. And then two years, two years ago, I, um, my cousin who lives in California suggested I move to... Cal you know, like to, to the to California to because the people would be more open minded to this type of work. Sure. And that was the case. I've been here for a little over two almost two and a half years. And um I've been seeing a lot of people individually, but uh I've now expanded into offering my work in well over the years in Arizona I also I should say I I had a number of workshops with people that you know, co-ed or mostly women working on group issues, you know, that they all had. And uh, then when I moved to um, California, I partnered up with my, um, one of my former patients who had Crohn's disease. 
And that's part two of my story in which he um, was nearly dying from Crohn's many years ago, um, nine years ago. Um, he had failed the conventional therapy wow. and sought my attention when I was at the ARE clinic in Arizona by phone. And I did a number of sessions on him and eventually his wife and his three sons. But he, we worked on every aspect, you know, holistic, you know, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial, relationship, all, all areas. And he uh, also became a black belt in Hapkido um, six months ago, seven months ago. And that's nine years ago. And he, between martial arts and a variety of some other treatments, but also working with me, he has completely subdued all of the symptoms of his Crohn's disease um, and joined with me because he formerly had his own business to offer this work to corporate uh, in a corporate sense so that we could, um, you know, help corporate people with leadership, uh, team building, uh, interrelationship, obviously, and helping them with stress reduction and all the things that, you know, using the, my technique, but basically having them really feel be and do their best at work, which ca would carry over, obviously, to at home. So we're, you know, we're in the process of doing, offering, these, beginning to offer these workshops. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's great. I mean, what I find. I know that's long-winded. <laughs> no, it's, it's, I'm glad you shared all that. Because, I mean, yeah. one yeah. theme that I picked up is you start with this very logical, traditional um type of medicine, I mean, a, a medical doctor, I mean, that's yeah. very logical, serious work to uh, more um, holistic. Um, and yeah, that, I mean, what was, I'm wondering, what was that like for you, uh, kind of like personally to sort of make that shift? Or what sort of reaction did you get from former mm -hmm. colleagues or friends? Um, well, um, there was a lot of stress at, with that move, because um my husband's a Harvard-trained kidney specialist, a nephrologist. Jeez. Um, so he, when I started doing these, you know, different things, he was like, I thought I had three heads for a moment there. <laughs> but then he, he kind of, um, then when he saw these people turning their whole life around, like a 180, he kind of went, hmm, you might have something there. And um, he also um, has had... Uh, some very se severe health issues, uh, and I helped him get through those and save his life oh, using wow. my work. Wow. So um, that was a real personal experience for me. I bet. And then um, my the medical community kind of mocked me initially, and then I had several doctors a few years later go, what are you doing? You look 10 years younger. <laughs> um, you know, you... You're doing something. What is it? They kind of wanted to know, yeah. and I said my secret. <laughs> you know, I. Um, but I. It, it's been a, it's been a, a bit of a ride. Um, I would say. Um, I've met a lot of interesting people along the way, different teachers. You know that have come in and out because they served a purpose and they no longer serve a purpose. As you know, there's people in your life that come and go. And they offer different things along the way because I learned a variety. Like I became a Reiki master. I studied under a shaman. I, you know, I wanted to kind of get the whole experience. I learned about dowsing. Have you ever used pendulums? Um, yeah. So all these different things. Uh, to, oh, I learned this about essential oils. I did training for essential oils. I wanted to learn, you know, either learn about things or, or try them one or the other, but I wanted to have a nice range of experiences so that I could use my intuition and know when I, when I complete a session with someone, I give them real earthly recommendations, like what's going to, I keep it simple, but I give them some simple things to help them move forward. So sure. this, this technique um, helps people, I, the, the, the prerequisites for the technique that I've developed are that you have to believe in a higher power. It doesn't really work well on atheists. So or, um, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but you said yeah. earlier you mentioned you were agnostic, but now you mentioned a belief in a higher power. Would you say now you would not consider yourself agnostic? Yes. 
and you believe in a higher power? Yes. Oh, all right. Yeah. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just, I caught yeah. that. And that yeah, was no, interesting. I mean, I, I became a believer, you know, because you kind of go like, show me the money, you know, right. I was like, okay, <laughs> really, you know, you pray and you do all this stuff and you go, what's happening? You know, like, I don't see anything, you know, sure. and I was just convinced me. And then when I saw all these things happen, I, um, you know, was, I would see literally a lot of different miracles with huh. a lot of people over the years, overcoming all kinds of issues, not just physical, some emotional stuff and some relationship issues and you name it, like the whole gamut. Right. Um, so, and financial stuff and, you know, figuring out their life purpose, things like that, you know? Sure. So, so to kind of get back to where you were coming from before I interrupted, um, what yeah. if, if you're a listener out there wondering if um, you should get intuitive holistic counseling, what are what are some type of specific issues or patients you might see or what might be a good reason to come to you? I, I get a lot of people that have tried many things and they're they're close but no cigar, so to speak. You know, they you know they kind of gotten where they need to go but they just want to fine tune you know um that have been open to alternatives but just not quite where they need to be um i get um i get a lot of people that are well yeah basically that have tried tried therapies have tried conventional and want to try to get off conventional or they have side effects from conventional and they want to uh, either find some alternative or, you know, uh, and or and or reduce it somewhat so that they can get down to a lower dose. But I also have people that have had marital issues that have resolved in a day. Wow. <laughs> I've had people really relation, you know, like someone that was on the verge of a divorce. I just worked on a few weeks ago and they were going to, they were going to split, and I worked on the man, uh, the family, and he he turned around. That's great. In a day. In a day. And I've worked on, so I work on only chronic physical issues. I do not work to emergency work. It has to be something that you've been kind of struggling with for a while, and you, you're kind of getting, going around in circles. Sure. Um, just very frustrated. I mean, there are certain things that are not, you know, like I can't, um, I mean, I try to walk on water, but it's not quite, you know, but I mean, you know, like certain mechanical issues. I mean, I, I don't get tissue to knit, although I actually, that's not so true. I mean, my, my partner had scar to, scars that started coming, you know, like deep, like hernias and stuff that started coming back together again, which was kind of interesting. Um, but I, I try to do more, you know, like, like asthma or diabetes or high blood pressure heart disease, cancers. I've worked on cancers, metastatic cancer that's gone away. Wow. Um, I try to like have a variety of things though. I don't really want to be stuck on one disease state because um, I like variety. So I, you know, it seemed to draw to me a lot of different things. I work on people with um, anxiety, depression. I, someone like I've had schizophrenic patients, but I, I'm not a psychiatrist. So that's, it's harder for me to work on those so mainly you know anxiety depression um and then um i also help with people that are having financial difficulties trying to figure out where what career they want to are they blocked and making a career move or are even blocked just with their finances you know i try to remove the energetic blocks that are preventing them from being financially successful yeah. so i've had i've had a large number of those um, and I have worked on CEOs of companies, um, you know, and I've worked on attorneys, physicians, you know, just a variety, you know, all kinds of professional people and hospice nurses. I've worked on hospice nurses that are really burned out. I've done that, you know, cause they just need some resuscitation and rejuvenation. I try to help them get back, back to their joy in living. That's, you know, that's great. I mean, it sounds like a, wide variety of services yeah, you can, it's really it's it's really good for anyone that wants to have a new lease on life you know um kind of get back to feeling feeling like they were years ago you know more more spunky sure <laughs> you know 
I guess is what you'd say. But usually, or if a lot of people are when they're struggling, you know, if they come in, they're kind of sad, and you know, they just by the time they leave, they usually have a smile on their face. They look a lot younger. Uh, all the strain is out of them, their face because they they just feel the relief. Yeah, you know, like they've been burdened. A lot of people. I have a lot of people that have a lot of burdens that I lighten. I lighten the load. <laughs> That's you know? great. That's great. And I'm sure there's not like a typical session, but if somebody were to come to you, what's a session like? Is it more kind of like counseling or do you pick up on energy or what's it like when well, you're working with them? <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I, um, well, you know, Edgar Casey was able to, what he did is he went into a trance and he was able to pick up on past lives. Oh, wow. So, um, that's the other prerequisite. You must have an open mind to past lives, huh. not believe in it necessarily, but be open that it's possible, you know? Sure. And so what happens is what I can do is I can actually see the past life or, you know, hear about it, you know, cause that's what I do. I tap into this higher, you know, higher wisdom and, um, I can get, a a read on the past life. And what I do is I help, I ask for permission, obviously, because I don't want to create karma for myself. And if I'm allowed to, I ask for a pardon, like our grace from the a release from that life so that the person can move forward in a healthy way in this life and move wow. forward. That's great. So I can, and sometimes it's not necessarily karma, but it could be like, um, a bleed through of that life. It's so potent that it actually impacts this life, you know? Sure. Um, Brian, uh, Weiss, I believe. No, or Rob. Yes. Yeah. yeah it's Brian that Weiss. Wrote, uh, many lives, many masters. Yeah. Uh, he was a physician. He documented this by using hypnotherapy and past life regression in which a person was struggling with the symptom in the physical reality in this life. And then when he, he found the root of it in a past life under hypnosis. And when he worked on them under hypnosis, it resolved in this life. So it's almost like I, I don't have to put a person in. They're totally awake. So I, and I'm awake. So, you know, they're hearing it, but I do not like people to dwell on their past lives. because It's very fascinating, but to me, it served a purpose. It no longer serves a purpose. So why dwell, you know, yes. Okay. You got all you need out of it. You struggled enough. Like let's, Let's heal the damage from it. You know, let's move forward. Let's let's heal the damage from this life moving forward. Sure. You know? So, um, what was your, I forgot what your other question was. <laughs> yeah. So, um, um, no, that so was. We have, you, so we have a belief in a higher power open to the concept of past lives and a willing spirit. Sure. Right? Uh, proactive because once I clear the negative cellular memory is what I call it energetically then I give people um, some physical recommendations in the earth plane, you know, maybe a certain meditation to do, affirmations, a certain book to read, certain supplements to take, you know. I usually try to keep it very, like, three things because most people have trouble doing one thing. <laughs> but if I can give them three, you know, three simple things that keep the good momentum of the session going, you know, that's what I like to do. So... And then I leave the follow-up to them, up to them, because I'm helping people empower them to be their own guru rather than being dependent on me, which is the conventional model of medicine in which you keep having a person come back, you keep treating, you keep coming back. You keep treat. I don't do that. I help people kind of become, listen, tap into their own wisdom so that they know when, oh, you know what, I think, I think there's something else I need to work on. Because usually what, when they, the thing that they work on in that first session is resolved. They have something else pop up because people are like onions and peel at different rates. Sure. And everybody, you know, when you get down to those core things, I don't think you're ever really done. You just kind of fine tune because if you were totally done, you'd be dead. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, so I, that's how I look at it. And so, but some people peel at different rates. Some people can handle only so much. And some people want to, like my partner, he was like a bat out of hell. I mean, he was just like, I want to keep doing this. I want to keep doing this. Like every week, practically, he was coming in for a session. I'm like, what? What are you, crazy? You know? And so then he said, no, I want to get this done. 
I'm going to get this done. And I went, okay. So nine years later, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but some people, you know, they'll, they'll have a session and maybe three months, you know, six weeks, three months later, maybe something else, maybe six months, maybe one year later. Some people just do it once a year. You know, they just say, yep, there's a few things bugging me. I want to look into it, you know, like that. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, that's, I think I explained, uh, yeah, about how I dug up their, their, their past life stuff. Um, I'm trying to think, um, yeah, and it's equally effective, uh, via landline Skype or FaceTime as well as in person. It's just the same. That's you know? great. So, because so it's, it's yeah. that, and I sometimes do direct energy to a person. Um, so I just have it come through me. And when I do bring in whatever I'm bringing in, it's from obviously a higher realm, like a heavenly realm. Um, it's, you know, typically ascended masters or angel, archangels or uh, divine beings or even earth energies, like the energy of a stone or a gem mm -hmm. or a location like that. And it comes through me. I get, I'm asked to work with that to assist in the healing process and the clearing process. So it's all done through words, but as, there are many articles that show that words actually can change your DNA. Hmm. So it's the power of words. Yeah. Um, and I just happen to know which ones work best for the person. Not everybody can do that. And that, I'm using my intuition to figure out what is going to work best because there's no one size fits all for anyone. There isn't. Right. Um, some people just don't respond to things and you have to, do, I just ask what's going to work best for this person energetically. And then on the earth plane is that, is how I get, my, you know, and I just hear my answers, you know, and I'm kind of have over about a 90% success rate. Wow. That's great. Um, so now I'm, now I'm really curious. I mean, I mean, any examples of your work in action, either particularly on, on me or any other clients you've recently had? Well, I think I mentioned to you already about the man that was about to get divorced, and the next day his wife let me know that they are getting back together. <laughs> so that was a good one. That's phenomenal. Um, and then I had um, one of the ones that's documented in the documentary that I'm in on Edgar Casey, by the way, which I did not mention. I'm in extended footage of uh, the uh, Beautiful Dreamer, the Golden Edition. Uh, that's of Edgar Casey, a beautiful dreamer, the golden edition, um, that, um, I had a person in there that was, you know, this was a very serious thing. He, he was in his late thirties and he, uh, was working and ended up getting into having seizures that were, couldn't, were continuous. They would not stop. Um, and so he was in the hospital on a ventilator. They had to paralyze him because otherwise he would keep shaking, you know, so they had to put him in a drug induced coma, you know? Um, and his wife came to the ARE clinic and she said to me, I, I'm, I don't know what to do. They want to take him. He's been on the ventilator so long that they want to take him off the ventilator and just let him die. And I, she says, what do I do? And you know, <laughs> that was a little tricky for me. So I said, let, let me work on you as a surrogate for him. Obviously he could talk. I said, let's work on you. And I cleared up a few issues that she had energetically. And then I, I kind of said, let's now, do you agree to surrogate your husband? And she said, yes. So then I worked on him through her and I picked up on what was wrong. And I said, okay, I cleared that up energetically, whatever it was and healed the damage done. And then I, she says, well, okay, so what do I do? Well, I never tell anyone, what do you do? You know? So I said, you, your intuition is clear. I said, you'll know what to do. That's good advice. You know, I said, you will know what feels right to you. You have to trust your gut, you know? And so then she said, okay. And I didn't hear from her for like <laughs> four months. And I'm like, you know, because I get busy and I, when I'm in a session, I don't keep, I don't remember any of it. Cause if, if I had to process all these terrible things that people have going, I would be on the floor. So I just kind of let it go. And she said, she comes back to me about four months later and she says, um, uh, you're not going to believe what happened. I said, what happened? She goes, well, when I got back, you know, he was on like a barbiturate coma in a barbiturate coma. So 
she said, I asked them to wean him slowly off the barbiturates, which would put him in the coma. I just wanted to see what would happen. And he got off the ventilator in like five days. Wow. And he's been fine for nine years. Wow, that's amazing. Totally, totally fine. That was one of my more dramatic ones. Um, I don't usually do that on a regular basis. Sure. Um, and then, um, let me think. Uh, oh, I had a person that I worked on that had a lump, not a breast lump, but maybe a lymph node. Um, and she was supposed to get it looked at under ultrasound the next day. Uh, and she called me at 11 that night and said, you're not going to believe it. I go, what? She goes, it disappeared after I worked on her like eight hours later. And I, she said, I've never had that happen in my life. I said, I really haven't had that happen. <laughs> I was like, that was not that long ago. So that was impressive. That, that and, is. And um, I'm trying to think. Um, oh, one of my CEOs that I was working with, he um, was trying to land a really big client. And he also was trying to publish a manual, you know, get it published. And he had writer's block, and he was really worried about getting this client. And um, I energetically unblocked him for both, and he ended up publishing his book, and he landed that client. You know, that was that was good. That's, that's so, um, yeah, those are. I mean, there's there's other ones. They'll probably pop in my in my mind. I really got to stand out, but um, there. I'm trying to think. Um, oh, people. A lot of business stuff I've done lately where businesses were kind of circling the drain and I kind of resurrected them, you know, sure. somehow. Yeah. Um, and I'm... So that, that's been good, uh, obviously for them. <laughs> right. Um, so, because um, I just get rid of whatever's in the way, you know, like energetically. Uh, yeah. You know, like the unseen, What really what this work is showing is that the, what you don't see in front of your face, the unseen is at work. There's a lot of negative energy. You can feel it almost. You know, when you know when you're around people and you can kind of feel that they slime you a little bit. Yeah. It's almost like I I really have antennas, you know, and I'm kind of going, What what's out there? What's in the way? And I kind of I pick up on it and I just vacuum it. I'm like a spiritual cleaning lady. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's yeah. great. They called me the soul doctor um, on uh, in Malibu in the paper, you know. Because um, I kind of do help work on the soul in a, a lot of ways, you know, try to get it all squeaky clean. Right, yeah. Because as above, so below, you know, if you vacuum out what's ever bugging you up in the ethers, then it filters down through your mind and in, down into your body. So, I mean, or on the earth plane, right? Sure, yeah. So, um, and, yeah. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's been it's been a wild ride because the, the work I do, I work, I do it myself. You know, like I use this, whatever I'm working on a patient I've done on myself. I've had a lot of life experience where I've had severe disease, deaths, accidents, injury, you know, like all the things that a lot of these people have gone through. I've had family members go through a lot of these tragedies and different things, you know? So, yeah, it's I walk not, my talk. Right. Yeah, and it's you know, and it's, it's experiential. Sure, and it it sounds like it applies to people going through a variety of things, and you even mentioned people, the CEOs and businesses. And I, I was wondering, I know you're involved with Lighthouse Corporate Consultants. Um, right. Do you want to speak a little bit about that? Well, um, what our what my partner and I decided to do was offer. Um, workshops, you know, small workshops, you know, uh, we originally said we felt like it should be six people, but actually we could probably do like 10 to 12 people at a time, you know, preferably the leadership in a company, um, or upper management, you know, that, um, are making a lot of decisions and could be good role models for the rest of the people in the company, obviously. Right. So if they're, you know, we're helping in these each of these individual workshops, helping them maximize their gifts, for instance, you know, what they bring, what can they bring to the table, um, helping them reduce their stress levels, helping their immune system so they don't get so sick, you know, and are physically absent from work, 
you know, like th these are the different things that we can do in a, in a workshop among a few other things, you know, that would help, um, you know, and we do six of them, you know, and we could also customize a workshop if, if a company's struggling with a particular, you know, like three different problems or something, we can always do something like that and just do an intensive, um, we can modify it really. We can work on anything that's just a long, you know, an issue that keeps recurring. That's what we're good at. Stuff that just doesn't seem to let up and they're, they're just struggling with, um, and they can't seem to bust through it. You know, we, we bust the blocks. That's what we do. We bust the blocks and whatever is in the way. We kind of just see it like we can, we can like get it right up to the surface and zap it. <laughs> that's, that's what I would say. It's very, yeah. it's very potent. Yeah, it sounds like, like you said, you've seen a lot of really strong and quite amazing results with it. So that's, that's yeah, great. Yeah, and, I, and I, I do like, I, I mean, the corporate is very good, but I also like to keep my individual things, you know, sessions going too, because I like a little variety. And I'm also working on um, writing a book series, which will be a manual for intuitive healing. Wow. Um, so um, I have a part, writing partner doing, you know, doing that right now. So we're hoping to get that out pretty quick. That's great. That's great. Well, we've um, we've covered a lot of ground today. I mean, is there anything that we haven't talked about that you feel like um, our viewers should hear? Um, I just feel like if you are feeling like you're hitting your head against the wall with something that you're struggling with, I'm a good person, a good resource <laughs> for you. And um, I don't judge, and I'm very. Uh, I try to help pe people feel like they can just relax and feel like it's a spa day for the body, mind, and soul when they do a session. Um, you know, you can even be in bed if you want to be yourself propped up. You know, it's very, it's very relaxing. It's, it's just a. It's like you get rid of this stuff that's been bugging you for so long you could, that you couldn't put your finger on. That's you know really what I do. And then I just help you figure out, okay, how can I keep this good work going? You know, and I just try to give you something simple. And I always like people to, it's very important for me because a lot of people when they're doing well, they never follow, they never say a word. It might be a year later, by the way, you changed my life. That's what they'll say. Right. say and I, you know, and I'll go, thanks for sharing. I would like to know like maybe a month ago, you know, right. like six months ago. And um, so it's good to do like journal your progress, like once a week, write down the shifts you've noticed, because you kind of forget how you used to be. That's it's what so ends up true. happening. Yeah. And so then maybe, you know, four or six weeks later, I'll, I'll have them follow up, you know, a week later, and then a month giving me a progress report, and then decide from there if they need any other work, you know, after that. But I really leave it up to the person. It's really like you're in charge, you know. You can decide the pace and, uh, how much you want to work on. Really. That's, that's great. And, you know, and the, so I go by Dr. Lisa Weinrich. Um, and I think you would be able to, uh, put up my web, my websites. I, I will put, I will put the website on. Yeah. Um, if for some reason people are listening to it, what is a website that they can go to? Um, www.intuitivemd. Dot com okay is my perth for the individual sessions all right and then um, lighthouse consultants net is for the corporate work all right yeah I'll definitely put that up on the blog but if people are listening they'll be able to hear that as well um, and um, I also am um, joined Twitter <laughs> figure you know I should because I, I want to post uplifting um, inspirational messages or some humor because people always like to feel good, you know, so I've done that and, um, that's been going really well. That's um, great. So it's under, you could, they could search for Lisa Weiner, but they want some inspiration or so forth. So sure. Um, well, Dr. Lisa, we really appreciate your time today. Um, and thanks so much for letting us learn more about yourself and your background and what you do. It sounds like it's a great work. Yeah, it's very rewarding. I'll tell you, it is very rewarding. Yeah. It, uh, night and day from conventional medicine. <laughs> I mean, because people have gotten over chronic conditions, you know, that's unheard of. You usually just 
treat symptoms, you know, you don't really get to it. Sure. So it's been, it's just been a, it's been a real uh, transformation for me yeah. and for them. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it sounds like you've gained personally from your work as much as you've helped um, the, your patients. Because I, I have, I've used these, I give people, you know, these spiritual tools and they, you know, they run with it. It's up to them to run with it. Sure. Right? But I run with it too because if I didn't have those spiritual tools, all the different crises that came up in my life, I would never have been able to manage without them. So. Yeah, I think that's so true. Definitely, I think, helps you as a clinician if you've gone through um, some of the experiences that your patients have gone through. Yes, that's another subject of another time, right. another talk, <laughs> yeah. or my book. Exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I feel, like I, I feel like I could keep talking to you about these subjects for on and on, but um, I know you're, you're busy, and so I want to um, just thank you again so much for being here with us today. I really appreciate it. It was really a uh, pleasure to be able to talk to you about, the, about your work. Well, I'm happy to share the information because I think it's important to, yeah. for people to know there are other options for them besides conventional medicine. Yeah. All right. Well, like I said, thanks for thanks for being here with us today, and I will uh, put the video up on the blog and um, let our um, put your website up there too. Okay. Great. All right. Did you want to stop? Sure. <laughs>